how to add scripted input to you, to your Splunk app. Okay. So before I start, let me show you what I wanted to do over here. This is the TMDB API website. From there, I'm going to this movie, and there is a API called Get Upcoming Movies. Okay, it will give you the list of upcoming movies. Okay, so let me first show you the API structure and how we call it. There's a try it out option over here. Okay, it requires a API key that is the mandatory option, the mandatory parameter you need to pass to there. So I already have the API key. So if I give that API key and send that request, so it gives me the output as a JSON format. And if you see, this is the list of movies it is giving me as a JSON array into this results uh, option. And as well as for there are certain other uh, elements as well to this to the JSON output whereas page number, total number of results, dates and total pages. Okay. Now for simplicity purpose, we will be indexing only the first page data and that to only this movie details. Rest of the stuff we will not be indexing at all. Now to create a scripted input in Splunk, what you need to do, you need to create a script which will basically access this API, give this output to Splunk for indexing. Now I will be using Python as a uh, script. Okay, uh, Let us build the script first, then I will show you how to create the input. Okay. So to do that I am going to my Microsoft code, new file, I will just save it somewhere as tmdb underscore upcoming dot py okay now this upcoming for upcoming file you need to place it to this I'm going to my Splunk home etc apps tmdb app inside tmdb app there is a bin folder inside that bin folder you need to place your script so that Splunk can understand that this is a modular script and when I will show you uh, the uh, create input page that time Splunk will automatically list down this particular folder as well for your script okay so let us build the script first so I'll be using Python requests module to access the API so first I will import requests okay now let me first give you the overview of how we will be developing this full script. So this is this will be our main calling function. If main double equals to underscore main. Okay. So I'll be having a main function which will stream the data to Splunk. So I'll define the main here. Okay, so we'll develop main as we go. So just currently I'm just giving it a pass. Develop the other script. So first we'll develop a generic method which will basically access the TMDB API. Okay, I'll give the name TMDB API call. Okay, so this will have request url and parameters okay now let me explain this one as well the request url will be if i go to tmdb site and if you see the request one so this this will be the url of the request and the rest of the stuff are the parameter to the request okay so and this is a get request if you see it here okay so what i'll do now i'll get the response equals to so i'll give it a so name as r e q okay so r e q dot q 
gate okay set the gate it requires two things if you see here url and then parameters so url argument i will give the my request url in params argument params argument i'll give my parameters this parameters has to be dictionary splunk uh, sorry python dictionary format okay i'll show that as well so if my request is not successful response dot status code is not equals to 200 then i'll exit i'll exit okay and before exit i will print the response as well response dot json okay now if my request is successful i will get the data as response dot json only okay then i will just return that response so to do that i need to format it as a json so i will be using um, json module for that so json dot dumps data okay so this is my generic method for tmdb api call now what i will do i will create another method to call that upcoming movies url so i will create a method called get upcoming movies by page as i said i will be doing for page by page and for simplicity i will be doing only for the page first page page number one so it's it will be requiring a api key right for the parameters and the page number by default value will be one let's say okay so what it will do first it will, will construct the request url which will be required for this api call so the request url would be till this point okay and then i will construct the parameters parameters okay this has to be in dictionary format now the parameters will be i'll be passing two things one is the api key and the another is the page number so api key will be my input api key and my page number will be whatever page number we want so this will also make it generic okay so now then i will return and i will have a call i will call this particular api okay i will be using my generic function to that so i will be passing my request url and my parameters okay so this this my this function is also ready so in the main now i will develop the main function where i will have my api key so i am hard coding my api key here but for production coding purpose you need to basically encrypt this one and keep it somewhere and then use it as it is a demo one that's why i'm just hard coding it just to show you how how it works and then i'll be having a variable let's say upcoming movie list okay so i'll be calling this method here okay with my api key and let's say page number one by default i'll be taking and then i'll get the output okay and and first of all let 
me get get the output as a JSON format. So do that JSON dot DOMS. Okay, my upcoming movie list. Now, if you see here, here it is having this key value pairs results and then results array as well as page numbers total page page number total results and all i will not be indexing this one so i'll be only taking the results one okay so i'll be only indexing this results part so to do that this is how we will be streaming to splunk it just a print statement so what it will do the, the splunk is looking for the data in the standard input so that's why from our script we will be providing the data to the standard output through sprint okay I'll, again it will be in json format dot terms okay so my data and it will be that red we'll see data then results okay i'm just taking that results portion of it and printing it so remember uh, so that means this print is actually streaming to splunk okay that's why it's called a simple streaming we are not we are not providing any any, any kind of pre-processing to the data there is a XML streaming as well. When I will discuss Splunk modular input, that time I will be discussing more about the XML streaming. In, in there, you will have very granular level access of how you want to data to transfer to Splunk. But I'll, be, I'll be discussing that one as well. So our script is somehow ready. Now, let me go back to my Splunk enterprise and create a input for this. I'll go to settings, data inputs all the scripted input will be providing will be configuring over here under scripts input okay so i'll be creating a new one new local input and if you see script path i will be giving the path of my app okay so before that i need to copy that script here i think i created in download folder so i'll go to my splunk etc apps tmdb bin i'll copy this script here okay back settings data inputs scripts new local script tmdb bin so tmdb upcoming dot py so interval is like after 60 seconds, it will run the script again to get the new data. Source name I will just keep as it is. I'll keep give next. Now, source type is important here. As you as you saw, the output is in JSON format. So I have to tell Splunk treat it as a JSON only. So I have to select the source type as underscore JSON. Okay. App context I will select TMDB. Post field I'll keep as it is. Index I will be selecting TMDB underscore index. I want my data to be indexed in this particular index. Review submit. Now if you see here when I submitted it in background in TMDB app local folder inputs.conf created. If you see the value over here, it's created a stanza with the script name and then disabled equals to follow means by default the script will be enabled this index it will the index the data and after 60 seconds it will again run the script to get the new data okay and source type is json now let's see whether it is starting indexing or not so i just write index equals to tmdb underscore index okay if you see it started indexing the data as is for each and every movie it is creating a separate event and then indexing the data uh, and also it is creating this interesting fields as well if i show you the api output before this vote count id video 
title if for each and every field it is creating that interesting fields as well because of this underscore json source type splunk is able to create this fields interesting fields okay now here is one thing and to show you let the script run again if you see when it run again it it index the same set of data again if you just to know uh, the movie id each and every id is created twice okay because every time it is running the script for the first page it is getting the same records so splunk does not know what record you already indexed so do to fix this issue we have a concept called checkpointing okay in next video i'll show you how to create your own checkpoint logic because splunk does not provide this checkpointing by default out of the box so you have to create your own checkpointing logic okay so, but this is how we we can you, you can create any script which will get the data from somewhere and just stream it to splunk for indexing okay see you in next video for for the checkpointing part thank you